Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, and our presider is Father Mike Guarino. Please stand and join in singing our opening song, O Come Divine Messiah, found on your worship aid. for our Mass together this morning for William Foster and Bill Cunningham. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your guide. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the Lord, glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion. 
herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish and that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without a spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord.
prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitant, inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. A rich man one night had a dream that there was a, outside the city a poor man under a mango tree who had a great treasure for him. So early the next morning, he got in his Mercedes and he drove outside the city and sure enough, under the mango tree was a poor man sound asleep. So he got up and he roused him and he told him about his dream. The poor man just kind of yawned and stretched very leisurely and he reached into his sack and he said, maybe this is what you're talking about. And he pulled out and showed him the largest diamond he had ever seen in his life. Oh, and he said, how much, how much? And the man said, if this you think will make you happy, then take it. And then he turned and rolled over, went back to sleep. Well, the rich man sang all the way back to town and kind of thinking to himself how stupid that man is to hand me a diamond worth millions and not ask for a cent. Well, that night, he couldn't sleep. And the next night, he couldn't sleep. And the next night, he couldn't sleep. And so on the following morning, he drove back out, and there again is the poor man very peacefully asleep under the mango tree. And he roused him again, and he said, here, take your diamond back, and please give me your real treasure. And the man looked at him, and he said, well, what's that? He said, your tr real treasure is the freedom that enabled you to give me this diamond. If you're someone who likes to divide the world into uh, two uh, separate classes of people, there are those who live with clenched, grabbed fists, and there are those who live with open palms. There are those who live seeking to possess, and those who believe in dispossession. 
And even in terms of prayer, I think those two attitudes exist. There are those who pray seeking to control God and those who pray who completely open. The first kind of prayer, if you can call it that, when someone seeks to have power over God, uh, it's really they're trying to be God. It's sort of like, you know, the story of, the creation story of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, we are told in this, that story, they ate the fruit because they wanted to become like God. They wanted to be like God. Kind of give up on their creatureness. Anytime that we want to control God or make him dance to our tune, that we do the same. We kind of give up on our own creatureness of who we really are. Perhaps no one has been more open to God throughout history than John the Baptist. And in this morning's gospel, what he proclaims, he proclaims the good news to the people that the long-awaited day of salvation is dawning upon them. And he tells them, prepare a way. And he also is a man who needed so little he ate, you know, simply. He dressed simply. And yet, he proclaimed very clearly that he was just the forerunner of the Lord. He wasn't the Lord himself. He also proclaimed very clearly that the Lord's coming did not in any way depend on their efforts. I think John the Baptist is a great example of someone who is secure in himself and is not dominated by ego. He did not seek or desire any kind of prestige or power or possessions, and his freedom was just because of that. He was a free man because of that. He knew God loved him, and he wanted nothing else, no other possessions. And we, too, have to allow God to love us. And knowing that love, I think we become more secure in ourselves. When we're aware that so much that we have is gift, then we kind of realize that we have more than enough. And with that realization, we can start, we can hope to, we can begin to share that in ourselves with others. I think the gospel is easy to misunderstand. It's easy to turn upside down. We can say God loves me and saves me because I have earned it. When in truth, the good news is that God has loved us first and asks little in return except that we try to love him. And knowing that love, we will have the freedom of that poor man under the mango tree. Knowing that love, we will never be prisoners to our possessions. Knowing that love, like John the Baptist, we will never cling to anything. Now, I want you to cling to every word that Father Michael is about to speak to you. Good morning, everyone. 
Thank you, Father Mike, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, some weeks ago, I informed the parish that I would give an update on our current um, situation vis-a-vis -vis the church, the capital campaign, uh, etc. I'm going to do that at all the masses this weekend, very, very briefly. I'm sure we all agree that we have an absolutely beautiful church building here. But in recent months, we have, um, we have realized that there are some um, important issues that really need to be addressed. There, are sev there were several problem areas that came to light. We brought it to the diocesan building com uh, department and they advised us to have a study uh, done of the, uh, of the church, of the building. And the report received revealed that the roof of the church has a lot of damage. Also, three of our four air conditioners are old, and every few months we are putting money into what I would call band-aid repairs. Um, the fourth air conditioner gave up last summer, and we replaced it. The church requires uh, interior and exterior uh, painting, uh, also, the carpet and the tile up here, which a lot of which is broken, uh, needs to be uh, replaced. And damaged sidewalks uh, outside need to be addressed as a major safety concern. The good news is that, they, that they structurally the uh, church appears to be sound. That's, that's wonderful. The renovation is estimated to cost of the church at least $750,000 which is a lot of money, and more than half of that cost will be in replacing uh, the roof. Um, the diocese has offered to grant us a, a borrower-friendly loan, whatever that is, uh, to get this uh, work done. Now, I want to inform everyone that none of the money that we have collected for our new ministry center will be used on the church. The integrity of your donations toward our capital campaign will be preserved. That money was generously given for a new ministry centre and every cent of it will go towards that project. And I want to make that very, very clear. Moving briefly to the ministry centre project, reignite the flame, relight the way. As many of you are aware, we were on the verge of doing a parish mailing for the project back in March when COVID-19 struck us, actually the week before, and it brought everything to a crashing halt. In spite of that, however, some of you still uh, continue to support the campaign for which we're extremely grateful. And right now we, ha we are more than halfway in pledges to the 80% needed for groundbreaking. We have raised, to date, we have raised $2.2 million, which is an incredible amount of money, uh, with verbal pledges that will bring us above $3 million. That's more than half to, to our goal. And again, I want to express sincere gratitude to everyone who helped us to get to this point. These are tough and difficult times, and yet you've stepped up to the plate. You've been extremely generous, and we're truly grateful. In the coming weeks, we'll give, we'll give you more information on both projects. Uh, Jim Holt, the co-chair of the, the co of the campaign committee, will address the, com uh, the community at all the masses next weekend to inform you on how, uh, how we're going to proceed from here. Several of you have also asked how we're doing with our capital campaign, uh, uh, well, sorry, with our Catholic faith appeal this year. Our assessment is 169,000. It has not yet been reached. We have collected 130,000. We still need 39,000. We again thank those of you who have contributed towards this. Now, if you have not uh, given and would like to do so, there is still time. I myself made my pledge only last week. There are Catholic faith appeal envelopes placed on the tables outside the do all the doors this weekend. 
uh, please consider helping us with this appeal. If we, if we don't make our goal, it will be taken from our savings, and none of us like uh, to see that happening. Uh, speaking about finances is not among my favorite things to do, and I do it only when absolutely necessary. And if you're visiting us and uh, for the first time and you hear this talk about finance, I apologize. But uh, thank you for your attention this morning. Thank you for your generosity uh, to our uh, parish. We have a wonderful parish, and I truly believe that we will get this done. Um, and uh, again, I, I thank you. Thank you, Father Mike, for allowing me to uh, have these moments and uh, wishing everyone a wonderful week. And just very briefly, um, rather than coming back again, Tuesday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and our Vigil Mass on Monday will be at 7 p.m., uh, and the Mass on Tuesday morning, as always, will be at 9. The parish office will be closed on Tuesday in, in observance of the, uh, hol the Holy Day, and we will be open on Wednesday until noon and Thursday regular uh, hours. Uh, if you haven't uh, made your reservation for Christmas Masses, uh, please uh, do so. And um, also a reminder that our giving tree is in the main entrance. Uh, to, uh, if you wish to, we are supporting six um, charities here in the, in the area, uh, and you may take the tags uh, with you uh, uh, after the Masses and return them. Uh, the details are in the bulletin. Thanks again for your attention and wishing everyone a wonderful week. Thank you. Boston, if you didn't know, you know by the way I speak. But, um, you know, it amazes me of just how generous you people are in mostly all the parishes down here. I mean, if I, we had a cardinal stewardship appeal, and my parish, which was a large parish, my, the church was like a cathedral. It was three stories tall, all marble. We used to have a, uh, an assessment of 30,000 and struggle to meet that. And you're already at 130 out of 160. And the fact that you've raised or pledged over $2 million towards the new uh, ministry center, again, just amazes me. And I cannot, uh, even though I have nothing to do with this parish, I feel like, you know, I'm window dressing, I'm here. But I really uh, congratulate you and thank you for being so generous. I think it's, it's absolutely marvelous, and I'm sure it speaks a lot uh, about Father Michael, too, uh, that you are so appreciative of his ministry here in the parish. And then I'm going to tell you one little story before we go on, and I know it's a little late, but I had a classmate who was, uh, is, he was Portuguese, his name, but he was raised and spoke nothing but English. But he was in a, a diocese that had a, a lot of Portuguese-speaking people. That was Fall River, Massachusetts. So in the seminary, he used to take all of these walks with a, an older seminarian who knew Portuguese that would teach, him, teach Portuguese to him. So when he was first ordained, they sent him to a Portuguese parish. And like Father Michael, he had to get up one day and give a talk about money. And um, what they needed was a new, um, new furnace. You know, it was a big old church and the furnace had gone. And I think it was gonna cost something like $100,000 for this big new furnace and to have it all set up. So uh, Eddie's up there speaking and he's telling them, uh, you know, they have to raise $100,000 for this new furnace. And they all burst out laughing. And he's telling them, you know, they need 100000 for this new furnace. Well, he comes to find out later that what he told them was, we need $100,000 to buy a new oven. <laughs> because it is Portuguese. But anyway, Father got it all right.
Please rise and join with me in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord as a great messenger. As baptized disciples in the Lord, we too are his messengers. Let us bring our needs and the needs of those who are burdened to our Lord. For the church, that she may faithfully prepare the way of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, that they may respect, honor, and care for all those they govern, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That others may see the love and compassion of God in the way we treat them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially John Shevchik, that they may know eternal light, rest, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For William Foster and Bill Cunningham, whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, look upon the needs of your people and grant our petitions as we prepare a way for your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by, his body and, by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Your spirit. Offer each other safely a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin, sin of the world, world. Have, have mercy on, on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin, sin of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And for those of you who are watching at home, we will pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that though, through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. A woman was visiting a church one Sunday and uh, the homily just went on and on and on and the man sitting next to her just nodded off and fell asleep. Well, when the mass was over and they were leaving, uh, this sleepy man, she went up to him just to be a friend and introduce herself. And she put out her hand and she said, hello, uh, I'm Gladys Dunn. And he looked at her and responded, he said, you're not the only one, ma'am, I'm glad it's done too. Please join and sing our closing song, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. We will sing verse one, two, and five. King shall come. 